replication. The origin of replication denotes the area of active replication called the replication fork. In order to understand how complex eukaryotic organisms replicate DNA, scientists first studied replication in prokaryotic models like E. coli. A number of enzymes are needed for replication to proceed once the replication fork is established. Helicase separates the strands of the double helix, and single-stranded binding proteins stabilize the newly single-stranded regions. DNA gyrase is used to make sure the double-stranded areas outside of the replication fork do not supercoil. Once the replication fork is stable, DNA polymerase catalyzes the addition of new nucleotides to the growing daughter strand. Other proteins, such as beta clamps and the clamp loader, help hold the DNA polymerase in place on the DNA. Short sequences of RNA, called primers, have to be paired to the template strands by the enzyme primase because DNA polymerase cannot begin to add nucleotides without a primer. Replication of both strands occurs at the same time, one using continuous synthesis and the other discontinuous. Continuous synthesis occurs on the 3' prime to 5' prime oriented parent strand, referred to as the leading strand. New nucleotides are added to the 3' prime end, moving continuously toward the expanding replication fork. Discontinuous synthesis occurs on the parent strand that is oriented 5' prime to 3', prime, called the lagging strand, and is completed in segments called Okazaki fragments. Replication on this strand uses primase to add primers ahead of the 5' prime end of the lagging strand. DNA polymerase 3 then adds short sequences of nucleotides, the Okazaki fragments, to the primer, filling in the gap. As the helix is opened further, this process repeats until the entire strand is replicated. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA nucleotides, and DNA ligase is used to ensure bonding between the fragments.